Righto, Toyota champs. Now, the MacBook Air 15 is an awesome laptop. Like, it's a big laptop with sort of like an Ultrabook part in it. And that's what's awesome about it. You get sort of like a thin premium laptop with a big screen. And you don't have to have those big, hot, power-hungry sort of Intel chips in them. And you never used to get big laptops with sort of like Ultrabook parts in them. What I mean by Ultrabook parts is the U parts and now the P parts, right? And this is what this is. And if you're someone that doesn't want to pay the two and a half thousand dollars a starting point for a MacBook Air 15, wow. Or you're just someone that doesn't want Mac OS, you want Windows, right? But you don't want to compromise, you want a big screen, you want good battery life, and you don't want to hear fair noise, and most of all, you don't want to pay that 2.5k that it costs for that MacBook Air. This is a good affordable MacBook Air 15 alternative. Yes, I priced the two together, MacBook Air costs $1,000 Australian more than this. That's like £500 or $600 US. And if you didn't know, this is the Dell Inspiron 6 and you can actually get it for like 12 dollars Australian. Like, that is just crazy for the laptop you get here. So that would make it $1,200 cheaper than the MacBook Air 15. Now, of course, you do get what you pay for. There are things done on this that are built to a price point. And there actually is an Inspiron 16 Plus, which will give you a bigger battery, Intel H processors, and you can even get a GPU, you know, a better display, etc., but, of course, it costs more. Now, I've been using this laptop for about a fortnight, and I actually really love it. So what I like about it is its premium build quality. It actually looks like a MacBook Pro. Now, it's not CNC machined aluminium, but it is a premium alloy build, and it looks the part. It looks premium. It has a big trackpad that works very well. The keyboard is awesome. No complaints there. It has all the ports I want, including USB Type-A and Thunderbolt. Now, usually at this price, you don't get Thunderbolt, and it even has an SD card reader and HDMI out. So everything you want there. Of course, it's not a Mac, so you can actually upgrade this unit. This model here comes with an Intel 1260p, which is sort of like an Ultrabook part. It sits in between the U part and the H part. So it's a bit more powerful than the U part, but it doesn't use as much power as a H part. So it's cooler, better battery life than the H part but you get better performance than the Ultrabook U part so it really is a sweet spot processor and I've got to say using it the last two weeks I've just been using it for general computer use I just put it in the silent mode I never hear it and never gets hot and I've never been wanting for more power. I've been playing Football Manager on it as well. So enough power for what this thing is, right? It is an Ultrabook, even though it is a 16-inch laptop. If you want, you know, gaming performance with an NVIDIA GPU, go to the 16 Plus or the XPS line, but then you'll be paying more. If you keep this within the scope of, say, what a MacBook Air is, that's a perfect amount of power, and you can actually play games that does have Iris graphics. So you'll be able to play even AAA titles at their basic settings, right? Don't expect too much but it can do it so within the scope of an ultrabook it's awesome it's got enough power for everything i need and i like that when i have it in silent mode you don't hear the fans and it doesn't get hot so it does what i expect an ultrabook will do the bonus is it's 16 inch it's not a you know small 13 14 inch ultrabook it is a 16 incher now the one compromise they did make with this laptop or maybe two compromises they made you know to get it at this price point is the display and the battery being small now the battery life is actually surprising it's not too bad i can get up to around eight hours battery life which for a 16 inch laptop is pretty good but it does have a 50 54 watt hour battery it would be nice if it was bigger but then it comes in at sort of four pounds for a 16 inch laptop so it's very light so there's sort of like a compromise and then the display right it's a 1200p display it's sort of matte it's only 250 nits now the color accuracy is fine not the color gamut the color accuracy is fine right so the colors you see are pretty much you know true to life and the 250 nits doesn't sound like much and it isn't but i have never had an issue i've never had it on full brightness inside my house here of course if you're going to take this out to a college campus and you're near a window or you know your office is near a window yeah all right 250 nits is not going to cut it but it has never been an issue and here's the thing right this is the display you get for this price point. And if you want a better display, you go to the Inspiron 16 Plus or you go to the XPS series. Then you can get better displays, GPU option, H parts, etc. But then you're paying a lot more money. Oh, and I forgot to mention there, the speakers are actually decent too. I was watching some Netflix and yeah, I didn't have to reach for my headphones. They're not earth shattering great, but they're, you know, they're passable. They're more than adequate. 
And I guess that word adequate sums up this laptop. It has an adequate display. Look, I see people with MacBook Airs like the old ones with the thick bezels and they're, you know, like, oh, they don't even know that their screen's bad. This is a better display than that, to be fair. But I would say the display's adequate. The battery life's adequate. And the rest of the laptop is more than adequate. And if you want a big Ultrabook and you don't want to spend that 2.5K for, you know, a MacBook Air 15, you want to save $1,000, $1,200 if you get the base model, well, here you go. This is it. I've enjoyed using this laptop the past few weeks, and I've got to say, it's the one I grab because it's thin, it's light, for its size, of course, and the reason is the big display, right? 16 inches. When you use a big display, you don't want to go to a smaller display, and I don't have any other compromises like it's not a big, fat, you know, 7-pound laptop or 5 5 pound laptop so I'm actually drawn to using this and it does everything I need for ultrabook needs and it's not hot it's not loud unless you put it in full performance mode and you're you know playing a game or something like that but I leave it in silent mode and it's perfectly fine I like this thing and you get what you pay for there so anyway catch you in the next one guys tally ho